heart disease continues to be, in, in most cases, one of the leading um, killers uh, nationally and internationally. It's a difficult disease because it can be very dramatic when someone has severe chest pain and a heart attack, or it can be very insidious in somebody who has a slowly progressing heart failure. In some ways, it's kind of like cancer. And when people finally see a doctor and find out what's happening with their heart, sometimes it's a little bit of a shock. I was diagnosed with a heart failure. I actually had a gallon of fluid in my lungs and I was drowning. So, and I didn't know, I had no idea. There is a subset of the population with heart disease who have such advanced disease that the traditional um, tools that we use, both surgical and medical tools that we use, aren't enough to help them. My specific area of focus is bringing in the mechanical circulatory support for patients who have advanced heart failure. When we say mechanical circulatory support, it really refers to two kinds of technology. One of them is a, a portable heart lung machine that we call ECMO, and that's spelled E-C-M-O, and it stands for extracorporeal, meaning outside of the body, membrane oxygenation. It's a portable heart lung machine that we can use for somebody whose lungs don't work at all or their heart doesn't work at all. We also have permanent pumps called LVADs, and LVAD, L-V-A-D, stands for left ventricular assist device. It's a generic term for these pumps that go into the patient and allow them to go on living a basically normal life. When I first met Elizabeth, she was in the final stages of heart failure. She wasn't able to participate in normal daily activities without experiencing symptoms. And we had been developing this LVAD program for several months, getting the infrastructure in place. And we all were kind of anxiously waiting for that first patient who was gonna kind of launch us into this stratosphere. The thing that really made her stand out as the perfect first patient was her fearlessness. She understood where we were coming from. She understood that we had the personnel and the infrastructure and the commitment to excellence, but that we hadn't done an LVAD yet. But she wasn't afraid of that. And because of that, we weren't afraid either. The team here, I have total trust in. I, I did from day one. I felt like family, I felt like part of. I've always felt that way from the day I met Dr. Sagebin. Together, we kind of went hand in hand on this journey to make sure that we had a perfect first outcome. And really, you know, from the operation, there was not a single issue during the operation. It went quickly, it went effortlessly. She did very well during the operation. Uh, her breathing tube was removed the same day of the operation. The following day, she was up and walking around. Really, she could have gone home in about seven to 10 days, but uh, she was the perfect patient. She continues to be the perfect patient. Having this LVAD inside me, um, I'm alive, for one thing. I wouldn't be here. And when I think of that, of what it's given me, it's given me um, life, it's given me more days. I'm so grateful I have the LVAD to be here, to be alive still and here for my grandkids. You know, I thank God every day. The team here at UCI Health, the surgeons, the nurses, physician assistants, the nurse practitioners, everybody involved, we didn't stop at anything to get this patient through it. So the culture that we're developing here at UCI Health really is a stop at nothing kind of culture.